Hey there everybody and welcome back to Napkin Physics. My name is Charlie Alvarenga, your personal paramedic, and today I'm going to give you a dose of CPR physics, but actually more over the two theories in CPR because there are two relatively well-known theories over cardiopulmonary resuscitation the cardiac pump theory and the thoracic pump theory. I'm gonna break this up into two videos and put it out there and let you guys decide which theory you think holds up. So we're gonna go over the physics of these two theories. But before we get into the actual theories, we have to cover some A and P. So let's cover that relatively quickly because the valves are gonna play a huge important in the theory. So one way to remember the valves is this mnemonic right here, toilet, paper, my, ass. And this is something I learned in paramedic school and it makes it relatively easy to remember. So we have the superior and inferior vena cava. We go into the right atrium. We pass the tricuspid valve. We go into the right ventricle. And then we go through the pulmonic valve, that semilunar valve, into lung parenchyma, we hit that alveolar capillary diffusion, get oxygenated, and then we come back into the left atrium. We do not pass another valve. And then we go into the ventricle where we pass another atrioventricular valve called the mitral valve. And then we go into the aorta, pass the aortic valve, toilet paper my ass. And then we're going to go into systemic circulation. So remember those valves because they're going to uh, come up again in both of the theories. So the cardiac pump theory. This is uh, relatively easy to wrap your head around because it's what all of us should be intuitively thinking whenever we're compressing a chest or we're doing external cardiac massage. So l let's break it down. Let's, let's cut our patient into a sagittal plane where they have right and left halves because that's what we're looking at right now. So here we have the sternum, this little orange bar right here, and then under that is the mediastinal cavity, and that's actually split up into three parts. The anterior, the medial, medial and the posterior uh, aspects of the medial stinal cavity. And then under that, the vertebral column. Now right here where this heart sits, that's called the cardiac cavity uh, in, in uh, many A&P books. So that's what we're going to refer to it from now on. Now, we are going to compress the chest. We, have, we are now starting CPR. We're putting some Newton force down onto our sternum, which is then compressing our medial stinal cavity. We're compressing our anterior uh, medial stinal aspect of our cavity. And that is going to put pressure on our cardiac cavity. But that will not eject blood until the vertebral column pushes up with that normal force against the ground because right here is the ground and once this compresses downwards then this will compress upwards with that normal force and we will this will actually squeeze and eject blood because remember this is a closed system so essentially what we're doing with the cardiac pump theory is we are just doing normal contractions. We're attempting to squeeze the heart manually from an external point and get blood flow that way. But again, I said that these were gonna come back into importance and here's why. For the cardiac pump theory to be operational, these valves must be operational as well. They must be working to prevent backwards flow. So what does that mean? Let's say they weren't working. If we were to compress, uh, attempt to compress the left ventricle, well, the blood would shoot back up into the right, left atrium and then back into the lungs and then continue to go backwards to the backwards circulation. So that's one way that it doesn't work. So what we're attempting to show is that it works through normal contractions and that has to work with normal working uh atrial ventricular and semilunar valves. Now, you might be asking, well, how does it uh, perfuse coronary circulation? Well, it does it the same exact way that it normally would. Once we release on the chest and we have recoil on the chest, we're going to have a little bit of backflow augmentation, and that's actually going to fill our capillary bed in our coronary system. So that's how that works for the cardiac pump theory. It's relatively easy to wrap your head around, but now we're gonna go on to the thoracic pump theory. 
Before we go, uh, take a quick snapshot of these. You could pause the video. This is how you could uh, get a hold of us. These are the resources I use. These are excellent articles that are recent, 2014. This one was done in 1993, and it, it just gives a beautiful overview of how they studied for both of these theories. And this, again, uh, uh, an amazing book, textbook of medical physiology. I, I, I recommend it to everyone. And thank you so very much. And remember to treat every patient like family. I'll see you on part two.